Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of this series in which we are going over selected narrations from Imam al-Bukhari's Al-Adab al-Mufrad. Today we're going to be talking about benefiting ourselves at the expense of others. In narration number 240, Al-Mustawrid narrates that the Prophet wasallam said, Whoever eats at the expense of another Muslim, then Allah will feed them similarly from the hellfire. وَمَنْ كُسِيَ بِرَجُلٍ مُسْلِمٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَكْسُوهُ مِنْ جَهَنَّمٍ And whoever clothes themselves at the expense of another Muslim, then Allah will clothe them from the hellfire. وَمَنْ قَامَ بِرَجُلٍ مَقَامَ رِيَاءٍ وَسُمْعَةٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَقُومُ بِهِ مَقَامَ رِيَاءٍ وَسُمْعَةٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And whoever achieves a position of showing off through seeking popularity and attention at the expense of another person, then Allah will put them in a position of popularity and attention on the day of resurrection. So this hadith serves as a severe warning against trying to benefit oneself by harming or bringing harm to another person. And in this hadith, we hear three examples of worldly benefit. Eating at the expense of another person, clothing oneself at the expense of another person, and gaining favor or popularity with people at the expense of another person. As for the first two, eating and clothes, we can understand this as gaining some type of worldly benefit that is financial. Now as for the third one, gaining popularity at the expense of another person, how exactly can one do that? Well, one way is seeking out the faults and flaws and sins of another person and get the attention for exposing them. So disgracing an individual to get people's admiration, ruining their honor and reputation to benefit oneself. Let's take a specific real life example of this. Someone wants a position on the masjid board. Why? Well, because they want the recognition that comes with that position. They want the power, the authority, but there's one problem. There's another person who is in competition for that same position. So what do they do? Well, they start by talking bad about that person. They try to ruin their reputation by exposing their flaws or their sins. And so they begin to backbite and slander that person, all because they want that position on the masjid board. Here's another specific real life example. Someone wants to become popular online. They want people's attention. They want cloud. So how do they go about getting that cloud? Well, they focus all of their attention on people who are already popular, already famous, and they start looking, rather searching for their flaws or their faults or their sins to find a way to expose them, to call them out, to cancel them. In this example, all of the categories or examples mentioned in this hadith can actually be filled because not only is the person seeking attention, they may even be seeking financial gain or financial benefit that comes with that popularity, financial gain that could come with that clout. So the Prophet Senate warns us against harming people in this way or for that reason, with a severe punishment. Food of this life replaced by food of the hellfire. Clothes of this life replaced by clothes of the hellfire. Position or status in this life replaced by position, a position of punishment in the hellfire. So whatever this person has gained in this life, that turns into a form of punishment in the hereafter. May Allah protect us. Now I know what you may be thinking. Does this mean that we turned a blind eye to people's faults and their flaws? And the answer is no. So what do we do? In narration number 238 from Al-Adab Al-Mufrad, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Mu'min mir'atu akhihi idha ra'a fihi ayban aslaha. The believer is a mirror for their brother. If they see in them some fault, they correct them. So of course, we don't turn a blind eye, but the question we should really be asking is, how do we correct someone? By publicizing their flaws, talking about them behind their back, ridiculing them, mocking them? No, we correct someone by first advising them, talking to them privately, advising them with empathy, with the intention to help them, not to expose them. And I actually have a whole video on the proper way to advise and correct someone. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. So make sure you go check that out and that should hopefully clear up this matter, inshaAllah ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Hey there, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video. Thank you for watching it. I really appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you could go ahead and share this video with others. And also if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you subscribe.